All right. Uh, welcome, everyone, and thank you so much to the entire Ubuntu uh, community in Korea for organizing UbuCon uh, Seoul, Korea, and uh, inviting me for uh, giving a session on WebAssembly and Ubuntu containers. So uh, today's session will be covering what exactly is WebAssembly and how does it fit inside the entire ecosystem for Ubuntu and Linux containers, and why. Uh, and we'll try to also. Uh, remove some of the misconceptions that are usually done, uh, especially in the current ecosystem for WebAssembly, uh, where it is commonly seen as a replacement for Linux or Ubuntu containers, but uh, the main focus of this talk will be to showcase how you can use both of them together to create really powerful uh, server applications. Um, so yeah, from this talk, I hope that you get to learn about WebAssembly in case uh, it's the first time that you're hearing about it, and then how you can leverage it uh, in case you are working on cloud native or even server applications and you want to create really powerful and fast applications. So uh, with that in mind, I'll get started. So a very quick introduction about myself. I'm Shwai. I'm a Wasmid uh, ambassador. I work at MilliSearch, which is a Rust-based open source search engine, as a developer relations engineer. And uh, you can take a look at my uh, social media handles in case you are interested to connect with me. Uh, I'm usually very active on Twitter. So um, this is a brief outline of what we are going to be covering today. So it's primarily focused on what exactly is WebAssembly. And then we'll talk a bit more about the Wasmid project, and then uh, how you can run WebAssembly with Linux containers side by side, and just taking a look at uh, some of the problems that WebAssembly usually faces and how containers uh, actually do help in overcoming some of those developer experience challenges that we face with WebAssembly. So a very quick introduction to WebAssembly first. Um, so one of the most common misconceptions that we usually find, and this is probably one of the biggest means if you have been part of the WebAssembly community or if you've just probably heard about WebAssembly, it's that it's neither web or assembly. Uh, the origin of WebAssembly, or of course, started as a web-first technology, and it was mainly uh, to overcome some of the limitations that JavaScript as a technology has uh, to be able to run more powerful applications on the web. But uh, the, the good part is that today uh, there are more number of applications for WebAssembly outside the browser than just inside the browser, and we'll see how that is actually taking place right now. Um, so, and it's also not actually uh, assembly language, right, or similar to assembly. So if you might be coming in from an assembly background or if you have interacted with assembly language, uh, WebAssembly is not like assembly, although it's somewhat similar as we'll explore how and what WebAssembly is. So uh, primarily what uh, WebAssembly is is a binary instruction for a uh, virtual machine. So what that means is that um, just think of it in this way that you basically take some kind of a programming language, um, like let's say it could be Rust or C++, and uh, WebAssembly, what it is, is basically a compilation target for these languages. So you basically go ahead and compile these, uh, what, whatever source code or function that you might have written in C++ or in any other programming language, uh, and then you'll compile it into this WebAssembly bytecode. And this bytecode works uh, as an instruction format natively with your system. And that what makes it very fast and uh, a very small size as well, because it's a native bytecode that we have written. And, um, and again, there are a number of different benefits that comes with this uh, aspect. So as I mentioned, it's a compilation target. That means that you can basically use either functional or your object-oriented programming languages or even scripting languages like Python and compile all of them into uh, the WebAssembly bytecode. So what WebAssembly is, and we'll just take a look at some of the features. So first is like it's really efficient and fast. As, as I mentioned, that it primarily works at near native speeds since it's a bytecode. So it, in, it is able to interact directly with your system resources. Uh, and it's working at near native speed, uh, like in a very similar to any native application that you might write. And then it's open source and very easy to deb uh, debug. And then, of course, like, you know, we are trying to uh, decipher some of the myths around uh, WebAssembly, so it does work for non-web platforms as well. And we'll be exploring more on the container uh, side and on the uh, non-browser applications. And then it, of course, still does have an open web platform as well because it was started as uh, like you know, a web technology. Uh, so if uh, you are aware of JavaScript, uh, there's something known as ASM, which is assembly.js. So that is the origins of how WebAssembly basically started as a technology. 
and it's also safe. So what WebAssembly provides is a very smart security uh, sandbox model. And uh, what that makes is that WebAssembly itself cannot do anything on its own. So you need to add more uh, things to it. For example, if you want to interact with your file resources, you'll add something like WASI, which is a WebAssembly system interface uh, that allows you to basically interact with system resources. And that, what that makes is that the security sandbox model of WebAssembly is very, very secure. So in, in case you're creating applications and you're running them inside of WebAssembly containers, uh, your applications are destined to be very small in size, very efficient, because they will be working at near native speeds, and uh, they will be very fast as well and efficient. So what we've kind of summarized is that it essentially is a high-performing machine-independent bytecode. So that also makes it very portable, that you just compile your source code into your WebAssembly bytecode once, and you can run it on multiple platforms. And it's a polyglot platform. That means it supports multiple programming languages. And it's a binary instruction format, so it works at near native speeds. And it's, again, very quick. Um, so that's what makes it an ideal uh, technology to be able to do things like machine learning inference or run high computational tasks on uh, non-supported platforms. So one of the most common use cases that we see today is being able to run WebAssembly on edge devices. Uh, if you're aware, uh, edge devices usually have very low compute. And uh, of course, they cannot run your standard Linux containers uh, because of the fact that they are very large. And that's where WebAssembly comes into picture, that uh, because of its small size and its performance, you're able to run it on uh, smaller devices where um, you might not have a lot of hardware capability. So things like machine learning and even uh, on the web browser, you see WebAssembly being used for video encoding uh, on, like, let's say, on browser uh, video editors. Uh, Figma uses WebAssembly as well. So there are a number of different tools that use WebAssembly on the browser and outside the browser as well. And just you're sort of just wondering how WebAssembly uh, kind of like looks like if you were to code in WebAssembly. This is just a Hello World program. And again, what you'll see is that it's somewhat similar to uh, your standard assembly. But of course, you see a lot of like hexadecimal uh, like, you know, code as well. But of course, the good part is that you don't have to write in WebAssembly because, as I mentioned, that you are primarily targeting WebAssembly as your, uh, as your compilation target. So you'll still be writing your main programming lang uh, functions in programming languages, right? like Rust or C, uh, any other programming language. And then you'll be compiling it to this bytecode. So this is like a dot wasm. So if you ever were to uh, kind of see that how like you know your application kind of looks like or what is there inside a WebAssembly uh, file, it, it basically has a file ending of dot wasm. So it would look something like this. So what you've seen so far is that WebAssembly is not just limited to the browser. In fact, it goes far and more beyond the browser, and you can run it on server side, uh, browser, edge devices, and even uh, mobile devices as well. And uh, there's a very famous quote by Solomon Hikes, who is the creator of Docker, that he mentioned in uh, 2008, I guess. Yeah, that if WebAssembly existed in, uh, in 2008, then Docker would not have been needed. And uh, just recently, there's an announcement of being able to actually run Docker and WebAssembly. So today, in this particular talk, I'll also be focusing on why that, uh, like, you know, using both Docker or, for, for that matter, any Ubuntu container with WebAssembly is a win-win situation. So, um, and this is, again, a very good uh, diagram to showcase the usage of WebAssembly. Uh, so you can see that between 2021 and 2022, uh, the usage of WebAssembly inside web applications actually reduced, whereas you can see that in serverless and in container applications, it has risen from last year. And uh, according to one of the latest surveys that was conducted by the CNCF, which is the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, uh, almost two-thirds of the applications today that are uh, leveraging the use of WebAssembly are being used on server-side rather than on browser. So that just goes on to showcase that how much adoption or the rate of increase in the adoption for WebAssembly has uh, taken over. So uh, th that's where I'd like to introduce uh, this new um, runtime, and this is called the Wasm Edge, which is basically a WebAssembly runtime. And it's primarily focused on being able to run WebAssembly for Edge applications or like let's say server applications. And it's a CNCF, again repeating, Cloud Native Computing Foundation incubating project. And 
it's open source. If you wish to contribute to it, you can connect with me later. And it's a very a nice, small, vibrant community. In case you want to get started with WebAssembly, you can definitely join this and get started with your WebAssembly journey. But uh, we'll be primarily focusing on uh, the was image and how we'll be able to create, deploy, build, and manage applications with uh, WebAssembly and Ubuntu containers. So uh, the first thing that we'll kind of take a look at is how to build was image uh, that's basically your web simulator runtime with the help of Ubuntu. So um, I'll request if you can, if you're interested, you can take a like you know screenshot or we can take a photograph of this particular gist. So this is just a gist that I've created on GitHub that kind of goes through the steps. And I'll quickly jump into uh, the gist itself. Um, I'll just probably take a minute to for like for the folks to take the photo. All right, perfect. So uh, here is the gist itself. Um, so first thing what we are doing is that we are basically going ahead and uh, downloading the source code for web, uh, for Wasmets and uh, we do git clone and we cd into the Wasmets folder. So in this case, uh, what I'm doing is that I'm currently, uh, I've installed, like I've basically spun up a Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu virtual machine on DigitalOcean. So that's what I'm connected to right now. And again, uh, I already have the, uh, Wasmets folder over here. So I'll just navigate to this Wasmets folder. And if you want to take a look at the contents, uh, let me just go ahead and show you. So of, of course, like a lot of this will include uh, the make files that help you to uh, generate and use the Wasmets uh, command line tool. So um, once you have done that, now the normal way that you will basically install Wasmets would be through a Docker image. But since we are focusing on Ubuntu, um, in case you want to do that natively inside of your uh, inside of your uh, Ubuntu machine, you can follow the steps to install all the dependencies that are required for the Wasmets project directly uh, by following these uh, guidelines. So just to keep in mind that you do require certain uh, uh, dependencies, that's LLVM. Uh, LLVM is basically a, a compiler uh, and then GCC. So you, you would require these two dependencies to install. So once you have installed uh, these two dependencies, you can follow uh, these steps. So it's basically a three-step process. Uh, first, we are installing CMake and then we are uh, updating and installing our dependencies LLVM and LibD. And then uh, finally, what we'll do is that uh, we'll install all these uh, specific um, like, you know, compilers, again, since uh, the Wasmets project is written in C++, so you'll find some of the dependencies are primarily for being able to build and manage C++ applications. And in case you f finally want to go ahead and build, uh, and you're not using Docker, so these are the following commands uh, using which you can basically build your Wasmets applications. And if you're following these, uh, if you follow these, finally what you'll do is, uh, you'll be able to get the Wasmets command, so I've already uh, installed that right now. Uh, my bad. So it's wasmets. So it would look something like this. So this is the wasmets command. And again, the wasmets command allows you to, uh, the, the toolkit basically allows you to go ahead and run and compile your WebAssembly applications. So one of the demos that I would want to probably focus on, and again, if you're also interested to uh, know more about how to install, again, uh, this is a uh, guidebook that you can follow. Um, again, uh, if you're interested, you can take a quick picture. Uh, so this, this will be used to go ahead and install uh, your uh, WebAssembly um, Wasmets project inside of your Linux container, inside of Ubuntu. So you can follow that. Now I'd like to give a quick demo of Wasmets and how that works. And the demo that I'll give is for being able to do uh, WebAssembly uh, machine learning inference. So for that, I'll just quickly go ahead and uh, let me just see one second. All right, perfect. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go back to my container uh, over here. All right. And let me go to the specific folder for was learning. Just one second. So the example that I'll be running is basically a TF light. Uh, TF light is a TensorFlow light, and that allows you to run uh, machine learning models and do machine learning inference on uh, lower uh, powered devices. So that's the example that I'll be showing to all of you. So I'll just go to that specific folder. Just one second.
And I'll also uh, quickly showcase that how uh, the source code and how basically that's compiling into the WebAssembly. So I'll also just quickly give a demonstration for that. Let me go. All right. I think so. This should be good enough. Yeah. Perfect. So um, I'll quick, quickly give a walkthrough of the folder itself. So we here you'll, uh, you'll find the source folder. And the source folder basically contains uh, my Rust function that is going to be compiled into the WebAssembly bytecode. Now, in case you want to understand like how, what exactly is there in the, uh, in the Rust function, let me quickly go over here and increase the font size if you are able to see. So it's a simple Rust function uh, where we are basically taking an image and uh, we have trained it over a very popular machine learning model, which is MobileNet. Uh, and that allows you to uh, have a number of different classes. So you basically take an image and you run it through the machine learning model and it predicts an output for you. Uh, and that would be the output would be what's the class or the label of that particular image. So there will be a bunch of different labels on which it has been trained. So what this Rust function is doing is that it's taking your input image, uh, running it through the uh, mobile net model uh, using TF Lite, which is the TensorFlow Lite, and it's rendering the output. So we here you can see that uh, finally what we'll do is that we basically generate a label and we print what's the label. Or, or that's essentially the prediction of the machine learning model. So what uh, our wasmage function or it will do is that uh, it will take your main Rust function and it will compile it into something as the .wasm file. So you'll find over here the classify.wasm uh, file. So this is the end result of uh, being able to get your Rust function and compiling it into your WebAssembly bytecode. So I'll uh, just run the specific command. Give me just one second. And so the command that I'm going to be running over here is basically this. So let's take a look at and uh, break down what the command does, right? So what we have is the wasmedge, right? So we installed wasmedge in the previous section of our presentation. Now, once wasmedge is up and running, uh, we are using a specific toolkit that's the wasmedge TensorFlow Lite to be able to run this inference. Now, uh, the next thing that you'll see is that we have a target folder. So this target folder gets created when we are basically running our uh, Rust function and we are compiling it into the wasm. So uh, usually the way you'll do it is uh, in case you come from a Rust experience, uh, we use cargo build. So the cargo build basically takes your original uh, function, your uh, module, your Rust module, and you compile it, uh, you give it an output for compiling it into a WebAssembly bytecode. And when you do that, so you generate the WebAssembly bytecode alongside with a few other dependencies, and our uh, actual web, uh, our actual wasm uh, file is inside the target folder, and it's uh, under this wasm32 wasi release classify.wasm. And then what we're doing is that alongside that, uh, inside this uh, command, we are sending an image, so you can see the image inside of the actual uh, file files, which is a gracehopper.jpg. And if I go ahead and run this, um, you can see that it says it is very likely a military uniform. So how this fetching is that uh, inside of our, and if I go and take a look at uh, over here, inside the source folder, you'll find a number of different labels. So the idea is that it's fetching the most appropriate label from the list of labels for that particular image, and it's being able to make that prediction. And you saw that how quickly it is, it is able to do that inference for us. And this is especially useful if you're doing uh, machine learning inference, or I mean, I'm giving an example for machine learning inference, but this goes on for any uh, browser site, uh, any other technology or like a you know, use case which might require a lot of com compilation. So uh, this basically is that. And let me actually go ahead and show you uh, the target folder in a bit. Give me one second. So uh, I'll go back to the target folder. So over here, uh, just one second. Not bad. Let me go to learning and I'll go to the target folder right. so now if I go to the target folder 
you can take a look at the contents. So there's a release and the WASM32 WASI, and that's basically the WASM32 uh, 32 WASI is the folder where you will find uh, the bytecode being created. So that was a quick demonstration of how the WebAssembly is basically like you know working. Uh, and again, uh, I'll go move back and uh, to the presentation. So give me just one second. Okay, perfect. So now uh, let me also bring this up. Okay, perfect. So now we'll focus more on the the main aspect of today's presentation, and that's WebAssembly and containers, right? So so far, what we have understood is what exactly is WebAssembly. And we took a look at uh, one of the common runtimes for WebAssembly, which is which is uh, Wasm Edge, and how you can install Wasm Edge, and then also finally uh, go ahead and being able to implement and run, like let's say, machine learning inference with the help of Wasm Edge. So of course, coming to the main point, uh, focal point of today's presentation is why uh, WebAssembly and containers, right? And originally, one of the common misconceptions that people have is that because of the amazing benefits that you get with WebAssembly that we covered in some of the previous slides, that they should be able to totally replace your Linux containers. Because typically your Linux containers are very large in size. So typically they will range uh, from anywhere from 1 MB to even like, you know, sometimes 200, 300 MBs, depending on uh, the uh, amount of dependencies that, that are there inside of that container. And what that would also make, make, mean is that uh, if you were to start these containers, it will take a lot of time, right? So what we found according to studies is that if you were to implement a similar thing instead of a WebAssembly container, your WebAssembly container will be one, I, I mean, 100 to 1,000 times smaller. And also it will be much quicker in terms of the Linux containers in terms of the startup time. And that is what you require, especially in case of constrained environments, right? And what that makes is that this can be a very misleading statement. Of course, it's really great, but um, and usually people have been propagating this that yes, uh, WebAssembly containers are, and uh, basically Docker has died, uh, or Ubuntu containers have died, and WebAssembly is the next big thing. But uh, just to remove that misconception, uh, the other thing is that we also have to take a look at the uh, developer experience with WebAssembly. So not everything is roses. As I mentioned earlier, that WebAssembly in itself is not very capable, right? Because of the security sandbox model and how the memory model uh, works within WebAssembly. So being able to do things like basic tasks as well, like being able to interact with your system resources, that's not natively possible within WebAssembly. So you need more tooling to use with WebAssembly and things like WASI, which is WebAssembly system interface, to be able to do that. So the ideal situation or the ideal uh, mechanism through which we can do, it, do this is that we can run the Linux containers and uh, WebAssembly side by side. So the way this architecture would wo work is that uh, all of your regular tasks could be managed with the help of the extensive toolkits and tool chains that you get with your Ubuntu containers. Whereas uh, if you want to do any inference or uh, any high computational tasks, those could be taken care of and run inside of your WebAssembly containers. And you can basically run them side by side. And that's what uh, this particular diagram kind of shows. Uh, again, if you are interested, you can take a look. So the goal is to be able to run your OCI, right? And uh, with the help of both either your low level OCIs or your high level OCIs, and these are basically your uh, container runtimes. Uh, so the example that we'll be running uh, today over here will be C run, which is a, uh, basically a low level container runtime. And being able to run your uh, containers side by side with your WebAssembly apps, and that's what is like you know, a win-win situation where you get the speed and the capability of your WebAssembly containers for doing the inference of whatever tasks that you're doing and still being able to get the extensive uh, tool chains support that we usually get with Linux containers. So that's what we are, the main major aim is. And um, again, there are a number of different links that I'll recommend to, uh, to all of you to check them out. So the first one uh, is basically an article that allows, uh, that kind of showcases how you basically manage your WebAssembly uh, apps in Wasmage and run them alongside either Docker or even Ubuntu containers. And for that, I'll just quickly uh, go uh, to that particular repository and quickly show a walkthrough of how that is happening. So let me go ahead and close this one second. and just to be mindful of the time as well. So yeah, uh, I'll go back. 
So the first one that I'd like to showcase is um, how you can basically manage your was maps with uh, both containers, right? So of course, uh, Kubernetes, I'll come back to Kubernetes in a bit. But uh, this is an example for being able to manage your apps. So uh, one of the repositories that I'll quickly show up over here is um, in case you want to basically run your uh, WebAssembly apps or even create, let's say, a container image for your WebAssembly app. So of course, let's say you have already created your WebAssembly app and you have your WASM file. Then you can simply go ahead and follow uh, these steps in order to basically build a container image inside of Ubuntu. And the other uh, focal point that I wanted to focus on is basically uh, this was image container apps that allows you to basically run your lightweight uh, lightweight was maps again uh, the link for this is there uh, if I were to like you know go specifically into this it will probably uh, become a workshop so I'm just skipping over this part but you can simply follow uh, these steps and you can see how uh, inside of a Ubuntu uh, environment you can run uh, this would require some tooling such as CRUN to be installed so you can just follow the steps uh, again in this particular repository uh, again for if you want uh, to t take a look you can uh, capture this particular uh, list of uh, URLs and you can uh, simply use them to run your uh, Linux containers side by side with your uh, WebAssembly so uh, that's what I wanted to primarily focus on. And uh, over here, you can see that um, what we are doing over here is that we are using C run, which, as I mentioned, is the low level runtime. And if you were to follow these steps, and I already have done that, so let me go back from the target folder. And let's see, uh, let me go back over here. Uh, let's see, I should have C run installed over here somewhere. Let's see, uh, let me go back one step. And let me go to my C run. Just one second. So I should have a C run folder somewhere over here. Okay, for some reason I'm not able to find it. But anyways, uh, if you were to follow these steps, you will be able to basically manage your WebAssembly apps and basically run was a edge with uh, C run, and that's what is the intended target. So I hope that at least this gives some kind of a background or context into. Um, how you can run both WebAssembly apps and also your Linux containers side by side, right? So that's the main context that I wanted to set up. Now, um, also talking about from a Kubernetes perspective, right? So, so far we have focused on containers and how you can use Ubuntu containers to basically build. Uh, initially what we saw was how to install and build WebAssembly. So that's with the help of the WASM runtime. Now, of course, uh, WASM Edge is not just one of the runtimes. There are a number of different other runtimes, and those are also supported inside of your typical uh, Ubuntu containers, right? So um, we saw first in uh, how you can build and install your WebAssembly apps within uh, an Ubuntu container. And we saw an example for a TensorFlow application. Then the next thing that we focused on was how you can run your Ubuntu containers and WebAssembly applications side by side. So now we'll focus a bit more uh, towards uh, the uh, Kubernetes side of uh, things as well. So of course, um, um, yesterday Hrithik showcased uh, a demo of uh, micro Kubernetes. So micro Kubernetes is a Kubernetes distribution that is created by Canonical and Ubuntu. And uh, it's basically uh, this particular tool, which is KWASM. It's a tooling for Cloud Native WebAssembly. And it allows the developers to very easily go ahead and uh, run WebAssembly applications on your uh, nodes, on your Kubernetes nodes. So it's very easy to basically just go ahead and uh, spin up these web, web, WebAssembly applications and then manage them on your Kubernetes nodes. And that's what uh, this part of, or this section of my presentation is focused on, that in case you were to manage your uh, WebAssembly workloads on Kubernetes, how you can do that with the help of micro kits. And uh, again, I'll recommend you to check out uh, the KWASM project. Uh, now, these are some steps that we are doing. So the first thing that you'll see is that we are basically adding the micro Kubernetes community add-on for KWASM. So um, micro Kubernetes that allows you to add community-based uh, add-ons to the micro uh, Kubernetes, uh, infra uh, like the entire ecosystem. So in this case, uh, the one that we are focusing on is uh, the KWASM one, which is, again, being able to do the Kubernetes aspect. And then uh, what we do is that if you were to follow these steps, uh, if we run this specific last command, and I'll quickly go ahead and do that. So let me copy this over, and I'll go back to my uh, 
over here. So let me go back to my root folder. And over here, you'll f see that I've already installed the KWASM installer. So I'll navigate to the KWASM installer. And over here, you'll find that I've already installed like a bunch of different files that are mainly just being used. And what I can do is that, uh, as I covered over here, that I can run this particular command, which is the micro, uh, micro kits, uh Kubectl apply. So what we are doing is that we are basically running a test wasm file, and then we are executing inside of our uh, inside of our Kubernetes pool. And if we are if we run this, then we'll quickly take a look at our. Uh, so let me go ahead and do this, and uh, it ran that uh, correctly. And let me go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, the current set of. Excuse me, just one second. So if I quickly take a look at what exactly are all of my namespaces right now. So I'll take a look over here. So you can see that uh, right now uh, my KWASM system is currently running. And then I ran a test load over here. So let me bring that up. Again, a lot of different services are running. So if you see over here, um, I ran basically that test load. And you can see over here that it, ran, it, it has already completed. And then you'll find uh, a number of different uh, provisioning uh, over here. The KWASM operator is running, and then uh, the actual dashboard. So this is a simple example of being able to run like a test workload of a WebAssembly app. And similarly, uh, you can manage and uh, manage your WebAssembly applications with Kubernetes uh, directly with this KWASM project. So if you're interested, again, uh, you can take a look at uh, these particular links uh, in case you're interested to run your WebAssembly workloads with the help of Kubernetes. So you can take a look at the kwasm.sh project. And that will walk you through uh, how to install and basically add it to your uh, Kubernetes. Uh, so first thing to keep in mind is that you'll have to add the community demo uh, and enable the kwasm project. And then you'll be able to run your WebAssembly workloads. So uh, Initially, like you know, uh, what you'll be able to manage both is being able to run your containers, uh, your Linux Ubuntu containers with the WebAssembly apps, and then being able to manage those workloads on uh, the K with the help of KWASM. Um, and then the final demonstration that uh, I'll just quickly walk through is being able to spin up WebAssembly-based microservices with Spin. So Spin is an open source project that uh, allows you to create very simple WebAssembly microservices. And what that means is that um, that basically comes with support of HTTP, so you can make those requests directly to these microservices. And it's, a, again, a polyglot platform, and that essentially allows you to being able to have any uh, function, even like you know PHP or JavaScript, Python, and compile it into the WebAssembly bytecode and then generate the microservice. And uh, there's, again, a blog post for that. So over here, um, this particular blog post basically covers uh, how you can create that uh, microservice with the help of uh, a DigitalOcean Ubuntu machine. So you can see that we are first creating a droplet, and we are creating an Ubuntu-based droplet. And uh, then we connect uh, our VS code to this particular droplet, and we install the Spin project. So Spin, is, as I mentioned, is an open source project. And finally, what we are doing is uh, we will create a simple WebAssembly app. And uh, in this case, uh, this example covers Rust, which I also covered for my uh, machine learning inference demonstration. So you can uh, even do that for any other language. So uh, the SPIN project has a number of different uh, starter uh, projects uh, where you have like basic examples of uh, Rust, Python, Golang. So whichever language you're interested in, you can start with that starter project. And uh, once you have written your app, then basically we'll go ahead and compile that again into, we'll use the Cargo Build app. And this is what basically we also did in our initial demonstration, right? So I had already done that beforehand, uh, which is basically the Cargo Build, and we, uh, we shared the target, which is the WASM32 WASI. And this is what takes your main, fun uh, your main Rust function and compiles it down into the WebAssembly bytecode. And then we basically just define our spin app, and we are able to very simply go ahead and run our microservices-based uh, app. So this is a WebAssembly app that is now a microservices-based app, and you can uh, run this anywhere that you want. So in case you are interested to also kind of take a look at how, uh, like you know, uh, to run your um, server uh, serverless applications, or even uh, like you know, being able to 
create microservices with the help of WebAssembly and use uh, Ubuntu as your base operator, uh, as your base OS, you can uh, do that very easily. Uh, with that, that uh, like you know, kind of wraps up uh, my talk. But of course, uh, before uh, finishing, I have a, um, a fun uh, quiz, and I'll be giving you some swag. So I've brought a couple of T-shirts. So I have a couple of questions from my talk. Uh, but just to kind of summarize what we covered, right? So we covered uh, what is WebAssembly, uh, how to uh, like you know, what are WebAssembly runtimes, how to install and run WebAssembly inside of a Ubuntu container. In that case, Ubuntu virtual machine, and then how you can run your WebAssembly apps side by side with your uh, Ubuntu containers, and then finally how to manage uh, your community, uh, your WebAssembly workloads with the help of Kubernetes using micro kits, and then also being able to create WebAssembly. Uh, WebAssembly uh, microservices. So I'll ask a couple of questions. I have one uh, large size and one extra large size t-shirt. So in case uh, you're comfortable with that size, uh, I'll ask a couple of questions. So the first question is going to be a very simple one. Uh, what's the full form or what's the short form for WebAssembly? Anyone? What's the, I mean the acronym or abbreviation for WebAssembly? Yeah, so that's WASM. So um, I'll ca I'll speak to you later. Uh, the next question is um, is uh, and, and the next question is related to WASM Edge. So I covered like WASM Edge is basically an incubating project under which organization, which foundation? Anyone? Uh, so the question, I'll repeat the question again. The Wasimage project is currently incubated under which foundation? I covered that briefly. Anyone? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. So, okay. Uh, and I do also have a number of stickers, so in case you're interested, you can collect that from me. But yeah, with that, I'll conclude my talk. So thank you so much, and I'm open to questions now. First of all, I should, I should say uh, sorry for misunderstood of the WebSM, because I never heard, heard of that word, was ne never before, so I, yes. Um, mm. I totally misunderstood. Uh, my question is, WebAssembly is part of the backend or frontend? It looks like backend, but the, so that code running on a uh, web browser or, or server, on server? Yeah, so see, uh, WebAssembly itself is not a frontend or a backend technology. Uh, again, like, you know, if you have some kind of a system code, if you have some kind of a machine code, right? Uh, that runs on the machine. So the, the way you can visualize WebAssembly is that, uh, as I mentioned initially, that's a low-level bytecode. It's an instruction format. Uh, and that allows you to basically run it both on the browser and the server side, right? So when you're running it on the browser side, the way you will implement it is that you'll use your standard browser APIs. Uh, that's basically JavaScript APIs. And you will, uh, you're able to basically stream your WebAssembly uh, bytecode with the help of your JavaScript APIs and then implement that to run any function or implementation, right? So that's the way you'll run a WebAssembly application inside of your web browser using your standard browser and your JavaScript APIs. Now, if you were to run this on the uh, cloud, then as I showed, you will use one of these WebAssembly runtimes. So that could be Wasimage, uh, Wasmer. There are a number of different runtimes that allow you to uh, use these Wasm uh, uh, applications or your Wasm file and then execute that. You can also uh, create a serverless applications. So for example, there are serverless functions written in Lambda, AWS Lambda. So similarly, you can also create serverless functions with the help of WebAssembly. So, uh, WebAssembly itself is not like a backend technology, it's just an instruction format, but uh, you can run it across multiple platforms because uh, it, like, you know, it runs at near native speed and it's, uh, once you just compile your bytecode, it uh, can run on any platform. So it's not like dependent uh, or like, you know, usually how we have your virtual machines which are dependent. So the dependencies that you install are specific to that host OS. In, that's not the case with WebAssembly. Ah, uh, so is it running on uh, some kind of the JVM or um, bare metal machine? 
if running on bare metal machine, I think it should be um, uh, uh, security uh, security problem. Yeah, because because uh, yeah, but running on like uh, like a JVM get virtual machine. Uh, I think uh, security uh, problem is a little bit small, but that uh, also have a performance problem. Is it working on JPM or running on bare metal? Yeah, that's a good question. So again, it's not like your regular native app, which might be running directly on bare metal. So it works similar like a, a native app. So the WebAssembly itself, right, and that has a security model. So if you were to focus specifically on how the WebAssembly security works, so there is a sandbox, right? There's a sandbox that is, uh, so you can just think of it in this way, that you have your WASM file, and it has a sandbox uh, around it. And this sandbox is similar to what we have with JVM. So there are a lot of comparisons that people usually make with like, you know, JVM and WebAssembly. But of course, there are certain benefits of WASM as compared to JVM. So it does have better security as compared to, let's say, your uh, native apps. It does not interact directly with the bare metal, right? It's uh, running in this sandbox. And if you, and this, what the sandbox allows you to do is that it cannot directly interact with any service or any other uh, system resource directly. So you need to use uh, extensions such as like the WASI, which is the WebAssembly system interface, to be able to do any sort of interaction. So in itself, if you just had the WASM file, then it cannot do anything on its own because it's very securely, uh, very tightly bound in the sandbox, in the security sandbox, right? So that's one of the benefits that it gets as compared to, let's say, the JVM. And uh, also, as I mentioned, that it's very portable, so it's not like dependent on a particular system. Uh, can I customize the uh, isolation level? For example, can I using GPU or something embedded hardware on specific? Yes, can I customize something isolation level? So I'm not entirely sure about being able to customize the isolation level, but yes, uh, in terms of like the hardware that you can uh, use with WebAssembly, that you can definitely customize. So if you want to use the CPU or you want to use like a GPU or even a custom hardware resource, with the help of WASI, you can do that interaction or you can make that interaction happen. Ah, uh, thank you for yeah. long and stupid question. Not at all. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Uh, if there are no other questions, then oh, okay. Oh, yeah, please go ahead. Ah, 네 안녕하세요. 저는 오토모티브 자동차 계열에서 일하고 있는데요. 예, 현재 오토모티 can be in English. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, English. 영어로 말해야 okay. 돼요. Oh, you'll translate? Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 아, 네, 안녕하세요. 저는 자동차 계열 쪽에서 일하고 있는데요. 자, 오토모티브 계열 쪽은 주로 C나 Uh, what we can do is we can take up the question offline, if that's fine. Oh, I'm done, go Yeah, actually we are out of time, so we can probably take up the session after this. Uh, we can take it offline. All right, uh, in that case, thank you so much, and uh, I really hope that you understood about WebAssembly, and in case you have any questions, you can connect with me offline. Thank you so much.